Hello, welcome to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey vlog. I'm Andy and this is Whiskey Review number 69. An incredibly belated Whiskey Review number 69. It's been a while, uh, I do apologise for my absence or like I said on Twitter, um, sorry to those of you that were kind of appreciative of the absence, uh, or both of you. Um, but I'm back with a Whiskey Review uh, for you today and what I'm reviewing is the Old Pulteney 18 year old. There it is. Um, yeah, it's not full size bottle, obviously, I mean, small bottle, not, not massive hands, massive face, etc. Uh, so the Old Pulteney 18 year old is part of a revised lineup that came out sort of mid last year, mid 2018. So if you remember, the lineup used to consist of the 12 year old the 17 year old, the 21 year old, I'm trying to think myself now, it's been that long since I did, and uh, a couple of others as well above the line. There was like a 40 year old that cost like billions and billions of, of dollars and whatever else. So now what they actually have, they've retained the 12 year old, so there is still a 12 year old in the range. There is no longer a 17. What they've actually replaced the 17 with is a 15. And then they're replaced effectively, like for like, the 18 for the 21. The other way around, you know what I mean. So the 18 year old effectively replaces that 21 in the lineup as their kind of like flagship, extra aged, I suppose you could describe it as, single malt. Uh, which, I'll be honest, is a real shame because the 17 and the 21 were hands down two of my favourite whiskies of all time. Um, with a little bit of leaning towards the 17. I did review it on, on the blog, so if you look back through the, the blog archive, it is on there, and it was phenomenal. I used to love that stuff, I really did. The 17-year-old the was just a pleasure to have uh, in, in, in the collection. Um, but times change, stocks change, company strategies change, and here we are. So we now have an 18-year-old malt, this is matured in a combination of both ex bourbon and ex sherry casks. It's bottled at 46%. Now, one thing to, I might as well get out of the way straight away. Um, if you recall, for those of you that have been around a little while, the 17 year old um, used to cost you about what, 55, 60 quid, something like that. The 21 year old used to step up a little bit, you used to have to pay about between 70 to 85 usually before prices went insane. Um, just to put that in perspective, the 18 year old that replaced the 21 year old will now set you back between 110 to 120 pounds. That's retail. That is average retail price. I think Master and Mark got it for about 112, Whiskey Exchange is 113. Um, so it goes to show you, real, really, you know, I mean, today's market, prices have just rocketed. I mean, since I, I last did a review, prices have rocketed even more. And you can tell that um, I'm, I'm kind of having issues with that anyway, in the sense that I've got something, you know, that maybe Bilbo Baggins or Frodo could get a bit jolly off. Um, but I'm not buying a full-size bottle of, of this for 112 to 113 quid because, you know, I'm not made of money. Um, so with that in mind, Let's move on. So we've got uh, got a nice colour there in the glass. I know uh, I, I used to say, come out with daft colour colour uh, quotes. So uh, so let's keep that let's keep that going. Let's reignite that. So I I think that's sort of like a burnished rust on the back of a 1983 Ford Capri. Um, I'd say possibly gear model. Uh, not too sure. So there you go. Nice colour in there. In fairness, some nice tears going around the glass there. I don't know if you can see. Do please ignore the Craig uh, branded glass. Um, that is the cleanest glass that I have at the moment. I'm not going to bore you with any facts about Pulteney. I mean, at this point, I've been away for two years. Um, there's probably been 800 million reviews posted between those times by other whiskey bloggers and, and various other people. Um, you'll know all about Pulteney. Very nice distillery, Inwick, etc. Maritime malt, you get the idea. So, on the nose, let's see. Menthol. 
lemon, butterscotch, salt, sea air, it still does retain that very sort of maritime, ozone sort of note that Pulteney have been using in their marketing for, for years on end. And in fairness, it does still carry that. It seems very rich, but at the same time quite light. It's not, you know, it's not incredibly sherry heavy. It's not overtaking it, but you can certainly tell some sherry cask on, you know. Certainly the, the bourbon cask in there as well is giving it that nice sort of like sweetness. There's a little bit of vanilla on there as well. So it's, it's interesting. It's, you know, it's an interesting note so far. It's quite a lot of citrus there. There's some like orange peel, lemon zest maybe, a bit of sweet barley. All in all, a very pleasant nose. Maybe a little bit of gingerbread just towards the end there. Overall quite sweet, quite fresh at the same time, you know. I mean, like I said, that saltiness is carrying through, that salty caramel kind of stuff that seems to be everything flavoured now. You get salt caramel ice cream, you know, salt caramel vape puffing things that people blow in your face when you're walking down the street. Interesting. I will be adding a drop of water to this as well after we've, we've gone through. So, uh, so yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it opens up, basically. So, onto the palette. Okay, ginger, more of that sort of sweeted, sweeted? That's not even a word, more of that sweet barley. You've got that kind of like citrus in there as well. They're still carrying on there with the caramel and yet you've still got that kind of salty umami towards the end now as it's going into the finish. What I will say already, I mean, the finish medium to long length is actually quite quite nice, quite warming. The, the, the palate, in terms of texture, on the other hand, the mouthfeel, I'd say is a little bit less than the 17 or, or 21 used to be. It's, it's not quite as thick, it's not quite as oily. It's still got a slightly oily quality to it, but it is a bit, well in my opinion, it's quite noticeably thinner from what I've experienced so far. Okay, we're getting, I'm kind of getting like a bit of a pear, green fruit, something a little bit tart again, so I've gone back to a citrus, a citrus note. The ginger's still present there, to be fair. Malted, multi, what do you call it? Malt loaf, like sorry, that's the one. But not too much of it. It's not overpowering again, I think that's sort of something to do with the sort of stereotypical um, sort of Spanish, French oak. You know, you know what I mean. Influence um, finish, yeah, okay. Like I said, sort of medium long, it's quite warming. A little bit of spice, a little bit of heat in there. Um, sort of like hot porridge, which I suppose lends itself going back to that sort of sweet and barley uh, note that I mentioned before. Let's top this up a little bit. There's the lid. So I don't normally buy miniatures, if I'm honest. I'm not a big miniatures fan. I know there are people out there that actually collect them. Um, I personally, I just like to buy full bottles of things when they don't cost 112 quid. Um, it's just, I think for this this review, it's something that I wanted to try because I was such a huge fan of the 17 and 21. And I, did, I was actually part of the tweet tasting for the, for the old Pulteney range. Um, well, it must have been back when it launched last year. I, I've just not, I basically, I tried it at the time and if I'm honest with you, I have no idea where my notes have gone about it. So I thought, do you know what, for the purposes of this review, I will buy another little little miniature and just see where it takes us. So they are a good way to try whiskies that might be a little bit out of the price range, or if you're looking at kind of stepping up a little bit, maybe in, for a special occasion and buying something a little bit expensive, um, then you know that they're a good option because at the end of the day, it's, it's better to invest something like I think this was. What was it, eight quid? Eight, nine quid, something like that. So it's still steep for the amount that you get. 
Um, but at the end of the day, it's better to, to lose a tenner than it is to lose a hundred and whatever, 200, 300. Jesus, can you imagine spending 300 quid on a bottle of whiskey? So you might notice that I put two, two and a little bit of teaspoons of, uh, of water in there just to open that up a little bit and let, and let that go. Um, and, and just sort of like while, while I'm here, just to clarify, I will be posting other reviews. This isn't just a one-off. I am intending to pick these back up again. And I do apologise for all those people that subscribed and then nothing got posted. That is completely my fault. I've um, just been taking a little bit of time out of the most of you. So after this, um, after this review of the pull knee, I've then basically got a um, one of the new cabin head. And I'm pointing up there because it is up there. Um, the cabin head releases uh, for autumn. I picked up the McDuff bottling, which is... Hmm, and I will be reviewing that next. I'm quite excited to, to review that actually because uh, it's got a little bit of air in the bottle now. It's had a couple of weeks just to open up that a little bit more and I'm really excited to try it again. So that should be good. And uh, if not already, I am on Twitter, at Maltbox, and I've just put a... Uh, there, there is a poll going on at the minute as to what you want to see next. So I'm thinking either, you know, giving it sort of like the run up to Christmas, maybe supermarket malts, so you're going to be looking more between 20 to 30 quid whiskey there, um, so like that, you'd be talking like your Tesco's own single malt, maybe Asda's Isla or Sainsbury's Highland or something like that, you get the gist. Um, there's also an option there for three whiskies under 20 quid, so I will pick up three whiskies that cost under 20 quid, um, and then review them and, and let you know, and uh, yeah, there's a couple of other options on there, so just check it out at Maltbox and then uh, cast your vote. So that's what I had a little bit of time to open up while I'm waffling, as you can see, it's got a little bit cloudy, which does tend to happen, particularly when whiskies are non chill filtered. Okay. So, there is still citrus there. There is still that vanilla there, but that vanilla is actually the amplified, in my opinion, um, on there. It's, it's more like vanilla custard, but not like nice posh custard. We're talking like bird's custard powder. Not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's a little bit of comfort food, really. Yeah. Cin basically, just citrus, a little bit of cinnamon. Still got that sort of saltiness and ozoniness, but that is actually kind of muted by, by the addition of water. Um, the overarching thing for me, though, is, is basically, uh, yeah, the... <laughs> The, the citrus in, in there and the, um, what was I talking about before? Hang on. It's kind of, yeah, menthol -y again. Yeah, and yeah, the menthol's come back around. Maybe a little bit of aniseed actually, you just didn't get that on the, on, the, uh, on the nose before the water. Yeah, maybe just a little hint of aniseed. Well, let's see what it does to the palate anyway. I don't think it'll have done any favours to the mouthfeel, given what I was saying before, that I felt it wasn't quite as oily as the previous uh, previous range. It's really dumbed it down, to be honest. Um, a lot of vanilla, which is what I was sort of saying on the nose. Weirdly, now that it's going into the finish, I'm getting kind of like a blackberry or black currant cordial, a bit like Ribena, um, which I don't normally get from Pulteney because like berries and things are not something that I normally associate with with Pulteney, so that's quite interesting. Again, with a toffee, but a little bit of a lighter sort of like sugar syrup, you know, like when you're making caramel in a pan, more caramel than toffee, actually, that's, that's a good show. Um, going into the palate, quite fresh. And it's shortened, uh, going into the finish, sorry, quite fresh and it does shorten quite considerably. Um, but you're left with that kind of like nice little hint of citrus and sort of, sort of gre fresh green apple um, just before it, it sort of dies away. Um, okay, so interesting. I've got to say, yeah, interesting. Um, in, in my humble opinion, I preferred the 17 and the 21. Um, is it a good whiskey? Do you know what? Yeah, it is a good whiskey. Is it £112 of whiskey? No, not in my opinion. Um, you know, I don't normally pull my punches, so why change? Um, I don't think it's worth 112 quid. I don't think it's worth the price increase. Um, while I'm here, you, you, you know, I mean, Pulteney, 
are owned by Inverhouse, who obviously also own Balblair. And you'll notice that after the Pulteney um, rebrand, so to speak, with their new range, they've done the same to Balblair. So Balblair used to do vintages, so you used to be able to get like the 97, which they equivalent to a 15. Uh, I think the latest one that I, I had was like an 05 from memory, which was like basically a, a 12, a uh, 10 to 12 year old. Um, and they've now sort of switched, reverted, um, if you will, to a standard range of a 12, um, is it 15 and 18, similar to Pulteney? can't remember now off the top of my head, but I do have, have a couple of samples. Um, and again, the prices have, have gone up a little bit. So, um, yeah, a bit of a pattern there, really. So, I think uh, in terms of score, um, I'm going to give this uh, this whiskey an 84 out of 100. Um, it, is a, it is a good whiskey. I do still have a little bit of a soft, soft spot for Pulteney, but I just don't quite think that this whiskey is what it could have been. Um, to put it frankly, and I don't think it is an equivalent replacement for either the 17 or the 21 in the range. It, it's very, very good in its own way. I just think uh, maybe I've got a bit of rose tinted glasses, and I'm not too sure. Thanks for watching. See you soon.